Good evening, everyone. Bonsoir tout le monde. Welcome to Canada Olympic House. We are on Facebook Live, and I have World Cup medalist and 2008 Olympian in modern pentathlon, Josh Riker Fox with me. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. And maybe for everyone back home, maybe tell everyone a little bit about the sport of modern pentathlon and, and how it works. How many sports, how it, how we how you compete over, over a few days sure. at a Games. Sure. So the sport originally came from the Army over 100 years ago. First Games is 1912, and it's evolved a lot over the last 104 years. Um, the five events are running, swimming, shooting, fencing, and equestrian. In the equestrian event, you randomly draw a horse, 20 minutes to warm up, and then you do a show jumping course. Ooh. So it's a wide variety of skills, very complex. I was going to say, how, how did you get into the sport? Uh, really just luck. I, I started out riding when mm -hmm. I was very young, and that I had uh, the privilege of meeting Laurie Shong, who went to the Olympics in 92, mm -hmm. in pentathlon and in fencing. He was the first Canadian to make one Olympics in two sports. And uh, there was a club in town, and my family loved the idea of just dropping me off at a practice on a Saturday, doing a bunch of events. <laughs> and uh, a bunch of training all day and then coming home and being so tired going to bed and that was it so fell in love with the sport when i was really young kept you out of trouble totally. kept, you, kept you out of trouble yeah. and i can only imagine the training because you know for one sport so for instance gymnastics for me you know you're so specialized and you're doing you yeah. know over and over and over one one very specific thing yeah. whereas training for this sport how do you find that that balance yeah it's it's a challenge for sure um, athletes typically will spend their, their time will be weighted really mm -hmm. wherever their weaknesses are mm -hmm. um, so if you're if you struggle in the run then you're gonna spend more time there in the end the hours are very similar to any other elite athlete um, it's just you know it's a balance it's, it's not easy to do typically athletes are recruited out of swimming oh, okay. um, have that sort of basic skill because swimming takes a long time mm -hmm. and physiologically you get a ton of development as a swimmer mm -hmm. uh, mentally and physically that will then transfer over to the other events so typically it'll be transferred from swimming into into pentathlon and then sort of develop from there and how long how long are the distances for the run and for the swim uh, so for the swim it's 200 free okay and it's a separate event so I should have explained that probably in the beginning um, your first event is the fencing and uh, you fence everybody to one touch mm -hmm. and I'll touch a little bit more on that later actually and then you swim 200 mm -hmm. meters separate event random draw for a horse get your 20 minutes to warm up do your show jumping course separate event and then your last event is the run shoot mm -hmm. so it's a little bit like biathlon mm -hmm. um, and so you, you, we shoot a laser gun now. It's 10 meters away, it's a pistol. Um, it emits this little red dot. You hit it five times, and then you run out and do an 800 meter loop. So you do that four times, and that's your final event. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way they structure it is that if you're first to go out mm -hmm. on the run shoot, the last event, um, you're first overall in the competition. And who's ever second out on the course is second, and, and so on, staggered mm -hmm. all the way back. So that if you, for example, if you went out first and I went out second, but I eventually caught you on that course and I was the first one past the line, I would be the winner overall of the event. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. And so do you win Do you win points in every event? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Everything is based on a point system. So it's so it must be so mentally and physically demanding, the training, but also yeah. During a tournament, I know you know where are most of the the competitions held. So where where are the powerhouses? It's pretty Eurocentric. Okay. Um, the Russians on the men's side, the Russians are by far the strongest. They've got the most depth. Um, they've got the top guy in the field right now, mm -hmm. Alexander Lassoon, uh, who had a great fence today. Um, and then all the other Eastern European countries are very strong mm -hmm. as well. China is very good. Uh, Japan's very good. Korea is very good. And then and then there's a smattering of good athletes mm -hmm. everywhere else. I'll say on the women's side, Yanni Marquez, who's the flag bearer for Brazil in opening ceremony. Um, she's one of the top athletes. She was a medalist in London. Uh, she fenced relatively well today. Mm. Crowd favorite. Everyone was going nuts when she was in the, in the stadium. It was it was fantastic. I can't imagine the Brazilian fans here are quite quite passionate for for all of their sports, yeah. but I'm sure especially for her as their as their flag yeah. bearer. And talk to us about our Canadian team here. Today was a huge day. So the structure in the Olympics is a, is a tiny bit different in that on the first day we have uh, what's called the ranking round for fencing. Mm -hmm. So you fence everybody to one touch. And then uh, that's our only event today. Tomorrow they'll continue with every every other event. Oh, okay. So today, uh, Melanie McCann, Donna Vaclis, they finished third and fourth. Uh, Mel Woo! Yes, it's amazing. So go I've, get it, go! <laughs> like un unprecedented on the Canadian side to have a result like that for two girls. Mm -hmm. um, Mel fenced 23 victories, 12 defeats. Donna was 22 victories, 13 defeats. So it's mm -hmm. looks like unprecedented. Wow. Really exciting. Wow, so impressive. And I know you know them well. Yeah. I know I know the community is a as a tight knit community. Yeah. So how would you be handled? Handling the nerves now. So knowing that after the first day, you're sitting so high, uh, you're doing so well, and then heading into now the second day, where 
where you have to stay strong all the way through to the finish to potentially win win a medal. Yeah, you just you have your strategies in place. So they finished the event. Um, they did media very quickly. They gave mm -hmm. some hugs, and then they headed back to the village to take care of recovery. And they're they're relaxing now. So they, they have all the strategies in place. And and really, the World Cups put you into this this uh, routine. You you know how to to approach properly. Mm -hmm. So what are your predictions? What are your predictions tomorrow? I I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to make any big predictions. I mean, I know where my heart lies and what I, I know what I'm hoping for. Uh, we've never had a medal at the Olympics in, in modern pentathlon. That would, for Canada, that would be amazing. Um, we have one world champion. We've got a couple World Cup medals along the way. It would be fantastic if we could put the sport on the map in Canada because obviously we're a smaller sport in the country and uh, their performance is, is just a great opportunity for us to, to give a little more profile to the sport. And they've done, I mean, they've done so well. They've done so well and we're so excited to be, to be watching them and to be cheering them on tomorrow. I know I I know you're now you're here working actually with your international federation. Yep. So can you tell us a little bit about that? I'm, giving back to your sport. Yeah. So I'm I'm just behind the scenes supporting the event. So mostly I'm liaising with the athletes and the coaches. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really lucky because I just left the sport as an athlete recently. Um, I'm in touch with most of the teams. I've got really good rapport, and I'm able to help them. Um, you know, when they when they need a little bit of support, where they go in, and I know the names of everybody. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm lucky. Uh, you know, I'm in a position where I can give back, and and being uh, on the field of play is is on the other side of the coin is. Mm -hmm. A really interesting experience personally for me. So. I was gonna say it's it's a different experience. It's always it's always an emotional one when you're yeah. not you're not competing. We've we've been there. We've 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 lived through it. So so how how are you how are you handling it here in Rio? To be totally frank, like it is difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, I miss competing. I, I love this sport so much. But uh, I appreciate everything that's given it to me. It's taken me all over the world. Give me like I'm so blessed and so fortunate. And it, it is neat to be on the other side. I'm learning a whole bunch of other skills and contributing in a different way. Uh, I I still get the emotions down there. I, I watch and I I go fall into these same patterns I had when I was an athlete. Like watching. Okay, I've got my bout here, but I'm watching him because I know I have the next. And I'm like I'm not fencing. Like you can just enjoy the moment right now. We can't. It's so hard for yeah. us. You know, once you once you try, it's really hard. Shut it you, off. You want to you want to be there, but as a spectator, you feel like you don't have control anymore. Yeah. which is which is really difficult yeah I know but um, for everyone back home and for young people back home watching the sport maybe for the first time yeah. what, what would you what would you say to them I take it in really take you know it's a, it is a different sport it's a little bit it's, it's new in Canada for us we, we haven't been around as a federation for all that long um, follow us on Twitter be a part of the team on Facebook uh, we've got you know we've got clubs we've got contacts keep in touch with us send me an email I'll, I'll send you a note back and tell you what to do I think yeah. the sport's fantastic not just at the elite levels but for the kids as well because mm -hmm. it, it is essentially the definition of physical literacy we we throw kids into every different um, physical environment or context to train and play in mm -hmm. and I think it's just a fantastic sport so keep in touch and let's 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 grow and make something magical happen awesome yeah. well thank you so much for joining me Josh it's, it's always pleasure. always a pleasure to have you uh, thank you to everyone back home who's been watching and learning about not only only our incredible Olympians but all of these sports maybe you've been watching for the first time uh, we appreciate all of your cheers and all your messages of love and support to this team so continue to stay tuned turn on CBC get on the Facebook yeah. all of social media go Mel go uh, Donna go Mel go they're, Donna they're up again tomorrow so cheer them on exactly they need your love and support they need it they need it so go Canada go thank you so much tonight we will be streaming live from here on Facebook with more of our great Olympians so have a good night everybody